who was Sanguinius, also known as the Great Angel. Sanguinius was the Primarch of the Blood Angels Space Marine Chapter, one of the most beloved figures in the Imperium. Sanguinius was among both the most noble and mightiest Primarchs. His charisma, humility, and loyalty to the Emperor, to the point of self-sacrifice, has earned him a great deal of reverence, even in the 41st millennium. When the Emperor began his great crusade to reunite the galaxy, he created the Primarchs, superhuman warriors to lead his space marines across the galaxy. The powers of chaos stole the Primarchs, but was unable to destroy them, set them astray in the warp. The infant Sanguinius came to rest upon the radiation-soaked moon of Baal Secundus and was adopted by a tribe of humans known as the people of the pure blood, or simply the blood. Sanguinius, like all Primarchs, grew quickly and soon surpassed all his teachers and was capable of mighty feats of strength and endurance. At three weeks, he was a large child capable of walking. Within a year, he was taller than any man. Before even being found by the blood, Sanguinius slew an infamous predator known as the Balite Fire Scorpion. Uniquely amongst the Primarchs, he sported a pair of angel-like wings from his back. Though whether this was by design of the Emperor or a mutation caused by the high levels of radiation on Ball is unknown. He was also said to have psychic powers, especially the ability to see the future. Using these skills, Sanguinius led the blood against the numerically superior mutant hordes of Baal. While he was known for his loyalty in and amicability in battle, Sanguinius was known for his total unstoppable wrath to those who threatened his people. Thanks to the effort of Sanguinius, the blood was victorious over the mutant hordes of Baal, and he became worshipped by his people as a god. Ultimately, the Emperor arrived on Baal, and disguising himself, infiltrated an address by Sanguinius to his followers. There, the Master of Mankind witnessed his lost son give an impassioned speech that displayed both humility and courage. However, like Conrad Kurtz, Sanguinius had already foreseen the arrival of the Emperor and immediately recognized him. When Sanguinius confronted the Emperor, he fell to his knees and pledged allegiance to his father. The Emperor inducted the best warriors of Sanguinius' tribe into his pre-existing Space Marine Legion, which soon became known as the Blood Angels. Sanguinius' first battle after being found by the Emperor was the pacification of Tagar Pantaris, with his first kill, a ferocious Cornadon. The pelt of the beast was fashioned into a ceremonial war cloak for the Primarch. The noble angel was highly respected by all the legions and by all his brother Primarchs. Even Horus highly valued his brother's advice. During the Emperor's Great Crusade, Sanguinius and Horus became close brothers, and it was said they were closer than any of the other Primarchs. He provided counsel that Horus listened to during the incident with the Inerex. Shortly after Horus became War Master, and was generally the one with the most sway, on Horus after the Emperor. It was Sanguinius who convinced Horus to accept the name change of the Luna Wolves to the Sons of Horus. Horus even revealed that he believed Sanguinius should have been proclaimed War Master instead of him, and pointed to Sanguinius to be the new War Master when he thought he was dying on Davin. Sanguinius was a beloved figure who was revered by all of the Imperium. Rebuti Gulliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, privately referred to Sanguinius as one of the dauntless few, the four of his brothers that Gulliman trusted the most. Despite his seemingly peaceful nature, Sanguinius was known for his martial prowess, to the extent that he was considered a match for Horus and Leon L. Johnson in combat ability. Ironically, this belief was reflected later during the Horus heresy, 
while Horus was plotting the Blood Angels' downfall at Cygnus Prime. Horus deviated from the battle plan laid out by Erebus by insisting that Sanguinius must die. Horus proclaimed this was because he knew his brother would never turn to chaos, but the demon Kyrus asked whether Horus was afraid of having a rival. That Sanguinius was the only one of the Primarchs who, if turned, would have a chance of finding greater favor with the gods of chaos than Horus himself. Despite the apparent rivalry between Sanguinius and Horus, the two were quick to become close friends. When Horus discovered the genetic flaw of the Blood Angels while on joint campaign, he kept the secret from the Emperor. Before Horus' treachery was revealed, he sent Sanguinius to a world named Cygnus Prime to supposedly fight the Xenos known as the Nephilim. However, once on Cygnus' system, the Blood Angels were ambushed by hordes of demons, and they soon became stranded on the damned world. At the peak of the fighting, Sanguinius confronted the greater demon of Korn, who managed to wound the Primarch by breaking his legs. Sanguinius was then rendered comatose by a psychic backlash created by the rage fire and amplified by the deaths of his sons at the hands of Korn. The Red Thirst subsequently erupted across the Blood Angels, and they slaughtered both friend and foe alike in their rampages. Fortunately, the Legion Librarians managed to eventually restore the Primarch, and he was able to defeat Korn in a second duel, banishing him back to the warp. Sanguinius then led his forces into the Chaos Fortress on Cygnus, the Cathedral of the Mark, where he was confronted by the Keeper of Secrets, Kyrus the Perverse. Kyrus gave Sanguinius a choice, sacrifice himself to the rage fire and have the red thirst forever lifted for, from his sons, or allow his legion to face eventual destruction due to their genetic flaw. Deciding to sacrifice himself, Sanguinius was about to step into the rage fire when he was beaten to it by Apothecary Meros, who was transformed into the red angel. Mourning Meros, Sanguinius slew Kyrus and sore vengeance on Horus. Reeling from the catastrophe that had befallen him on Cygnus, but determined to defeat Horus, Sanguinius had the Blood Angel set course for Terra. However, as a result of the ruined storm created by the treacherous Erebus, navigation and communication across the Imperium was made almost impossible. Following the pharaoh's psychic beacon, Sanguinius eventually found his way to Macarage, where Rebuti Goleman, fearing Terra lost, declared a reluctant Sanguinius the new emperor regent. Of his contingency empire, Imperium Secundus, Sanguinius was soon plagued by visions of his death at the hands of Horus and realized this was no omen, but a window in the future. Later, during the Battle of Sotha, while Goleman and Leon L. Johnson were both away, Sanguinius was confronted by Conrad Kurtz, who had infiltrated his throne room in Makarej and badly wounded Exelion. Kurtz founded, confided that he had foreseen Sanguinius' death in the vengeful spirit and wanted to know why the angels still followed the emperor when their mutual visions had proven his teachings to have been lies. He also asked why Sanguinius had rejected Kairos' offer at Sang Cygnus Prime, and if the angel felt he was more deserving of the title of Warmaster than Horus, to which Sanguinius responded he was not. Trying to teach Sanguinius that fate could not be changed, and that his own death would not be here, Kurtz let Sanguinius come at him with his sword and goaded him to cut him down. Sanguinius ultimately halted his sword, urging Kurtz that it was not too late to change and join with his loyalist brothers. But claiming there was only chaos in the end, Kurtz set off an explosion trap and escaped. As the Lion and Goleman continued to clash over policy in Imperium Secundus, Sanguinius attempted to mediate the two. He later presided over the trial of the now-captured Conrad Kurtz. After Leon L. Johnson attempted to kill Kurtz during the trial while in a rage at the Night Hunter's accusations, 
Sanguinius dismissed him from Imperium Secundus. Later, Sanguinius became determined to pass the sentence of death down onto Kurtz himself. But just as he was about to strike down the Primarch, Leon reappeared, demanding to be Kurtz's jailer and stating that Kurtz was able to see the future. And he repeated that Kurtz's claim that his death would be at the hands of an assassin was sent by the Emperor. This, to the Leon, was proof that the Emperor was still alive. Sanguinius recognized that his own visions of death would also be true, and he shared his visions of death at the hands of Horus with both of his brothers. Following the trial of Kurtz, Sanguinius, Leon, and Gulliman all agreed to try and breach the ruined storm to reach Terra and aid the Emperor who they now knew still lived. Sanguinius was now beginning to suffer from the beginning stages of the Black Rage, which infected Sanguinius' mind due to the prophetic visions of his own death. In a fit of hysteria, Sanguinius nearly struck down one of his own sons aboard the Red Tear. He was desperate to prevent all of his sons from falling as he was, and was seeking any answer. While in the ruined storm, the Loyalist fleet came across a variety of horrors and word of entity-spreading destruction known as the Pilgrim. During the Battle of Piran, Sanguinius received a vision, and he realized that he needed to go where this struggle had begun. Davin, the world where Horus had fallen. Reluctantly, Gulliman and Leon agreed to trust in Sanguinius, but both had thought they would simply destroy the world upon arriving. At Davin, the Loyalist fleet found the entire world surrounded by a shell made of the bones of trillions, dubbed the Necrosphere. The bombardment managed to penetrate the sphere, and the fleet was soon in orbit above Davin. While over Davin, Sanguinius shocked the lion by boarding the Invincible Reason and taking the captive Conrad Kurtz with him. Sanguinius hoped to use Kurtz's prophetic abilities to determine what he was meant to do. However, the Dark Angel's guards did not submit before Sanguinius, and he was forced to dispatch several using non-lethal methods. After escaping the Invincible Reason, Sanguinius commended a mass landing on the world, and the enraged Leon nearly ordered that Davin be subjected to Exterminatus regardless of Sanguinius' presence on it. On Davin, a mass drop pod assault was conducted, but nothing was found and the population was absent. The four Primarchs eventually traveled to the temple where Horus had been subjected to the ritual by Erebus and the Serpent Lodge that had corrupted him. Inside the temple, Sanguinius stood at the altar where Horus had been laid and proclaimed that he would change his destiny. This activated Davin itself. Warp storms roared above, and a portal opened up that swallowed up Sanguinius. Inside the portal in Davin, Sanguinius was back on Terra, in a beautiful garden at the Imperial Palace. He, for the first time, was experiencing a vision that was not his death, aboard the vengeful spirit. He saw Logar, dead by his hands, and the remaining traitor Primarchs brought before him in chains. The Emperor congratulated Sanguinius on his victory and named him the Imperator Regis of the Imperium. With Sanguinius as the Emperor's regent, he went on to lead a great campaign that purged the Imperium of all corruption and evil, and the galaxy was his to rule. Seeing this future and observing the Emperor's mannerisms, he became suspicious as to what was going on. At last, he cut down the image of the Emperor, who was revealed to be the demon Madiel in disguise. Sanguinius and Madiel engaged in a vicious duel. Madiel had unleashed a demonic horde through the portal to prevent Gulliman and the lion breaking through. The host included a massive soul grinder, which was destroyed in a combined effort by Leon and Gilman. On the other side of the portal, the angel was eventually pinned by Meriel's hosts of demonic troops, and the Preacher of Chaos, undivided, announced that Sanguinius would serve or die. Madeil dubbed Horus an imperfect vessel and urged Sanguinius to strike Lupercal down and take up the mantle as War Master of Chaos. 
If he did so, Medill declared his sons would be spared of the Black Rage. However, despite the temptation, Sanguinius denied the demon and broke free of his captors. Sanguinius and Medill again engaged in a duel, but this time the demon was impaled by both the blade and carmine and spear of Telesto. The two wounded warriors wrestled with one another until they were both in the portal, torn between the Materium and the Immaterium. On Davin, Goleman and Leon saw Sanguinius' upper half sticking through the portal and rushed to his aid, but were blocked by demons. The stalemate endured until Sanguinius' herald stepped forth and declared that he would take the angel's place in the portal. Realizing that this was his herald's destiny, and that he needed to confront Horus at Terra for the Imperium to endure, Sanguinius solemnly agreed. The Sanguinier charged into Medill, and he was tackled. The demon back through the portal was transformed into a golden angelic form. The Primarchs and their escorts managed to escape the temple just as it collapsed. In the place of where Davin once was, a breach in the ruin storm was visible. The path led to Terra, but upon further study it became apparent that somehow Horus had foreseen this route, and a large blockade was erected to block them. Goleman and Leon agreed to distract the blockade while Sanguinius and the Blood Angels made directly for Terra. For that was their destiny. Sanguinius took Cruz with him, stating he would face their father's justice. However, once aboard the Red Tier, Sanguinius revealed that he would allow Cruz to follow his destiny as well, death at the hands of an imperial assassin. Sanguinius stated that while it may be millennia for him to be found, Kurtz's fate would catch up with him eventually. With that, he sealed Kurtz in a stasis coffin and jestened the frozen Primarch into space as the Night Haunter roared in rage. The delaying action of Goleman and the Lion allowed Sanguinius and the Blood Angels to reach Terra. He met with Rogel Dorn, Lehman Russ, Jakarti Khan, and Malkador the Sigitite to discuss their upcoming strategy. Sanguinius urged Russ to remain on Terra for the battle instead of leaving to face Horus directly. Though not as much as Dorn, Sanguinius's arrival was publicized greatly by loyalist media, his angelic figure being used as propaganda to boost the morale of the failing imperial war effort. Sanguinius along with Khan later appeared at the Battle of Beta Gorman, though over a month late due to difficult warp travel. Sanguinius immediately took over the confused loyalist war effort and launched a major offensive towards Beta Gorman II. During the battle, which saw over a thousand titans battle one another, Sanguinius is in, and his Suganuary guard boarded the traitor Imperator, Titan Axis Mundi, destroying it from the inside. However, the entire battle on Beta Garmin II was an elaborate ploy from Horus, whose real target was Beta Garmin III. Loyalist forces on Beta Garmin II were largely destroyed in a shower of orbitable debris caused by the detonation of the star fort, the Anvil. And in the aftermath of the disaster, Sanguinius and Khan agreed that Dorn's gambit at Beta Gorman had reached its limit and it was time to return to Terra. During the final phase of the Solar War, Sanguinius appeared in Dorn's Bob Bastion alongside Khan and Malkador. He expressed belief that Dorn's defensive efforts in the Soul System was ultimately futile, as the war would be decided at Terra and he was destined to face Horus. In the subsequent Battle of Terra, Sanguinius was a key symbol of morale for the besieged Loyalist forces. He was forbidden from flying in the open or leaving the palace walls by Rogel Dorn, something he would sometimes violate. During the early stages of the siege, he led a sorte out of the walls to rescue Khan from swarms of Death Guard, as well as inspire the beleaguered conscripts manning the outer fences around the palace. Later, during the first traitor Astartes' assault upon the walls of the palace, Sanguinius led a Blood Angel's Imperial Fists and Lego Salaria counterattack out of the Helios Gate to buy time for the Imperial Army troops outside to retreat within. 
During this battle, he was confronted by Angron, who roared a challenge at the angel. Sanguinius refused, instead saluting his brother and proclaiming that while they would one day battle, today was not that day. Later, Sanguinius was put in charge of the defenses of Gorgon Bar, fighting alongside Imperial Fist's Captain Fener Ran and large amounts of Imperial Army. During the battle, Sanguinius discovered that his visions had grown to include real-time visions of what some of his brother Primarchs were currently seeing. Sanguinius saw the siege through Arngorn's own eyes. During the battle of Gorgon Bar, Sanguinius was able to fell a Ligio Volpa, warlord titan, by assaulting its head, an act so impressive that its three accompanying warhound titans fled at the sight of the angel. Such was the inspiration provided by Sanguinius that Gorgon Bar held under a large iron warrior's assault. After the battle, Sanguinius informed Dorn that he had a vision of Angorn, sensing the destruction of Nucrea by the Dark Angels, indicating that Leon was still alive. In the later stages of the siege, Sanguinius fought valiantly, organizing the final defense of the Imperial Palace and held the Eternity Gate alone, with no others could withstand the horror of the assault, even the breaking back of the same greater demon, Kabanda, who wounded him in Signum. When the Emperor teleported aboard Horus's battle barrage, the vengeful spirit, Sanguinius was with him, but they became separated and the Primarch was forced to face Horus first. Despite being in the pit of Horus's tainted and mutated chaos field battle barge, Sanguinius was able to revert his brother to the side of the Emperor, using their old friendship as a lever. Horus would not listen to or agree with any of Sanguinius's words, and the two argued and tried to sway the other to the side of the heresy they stood upon. Sanguinius was eventually struck down by Horus. The only damage Sanguinius did was create a small dent in Horus's armor. Some say, however, that it was through his chink in Horus's armor that the Emperor was able to deliver the fatal blow. Thus, the belief is that Sanguinius did not die in vain, but by dying allowed Horus to be slain and the heresy destroyed. Sanguinius' body was taken by the Imperial forces as they retreated from the buckling Chaos Barge, and his body was borne away to his home planet Ball, where he was laid to rest in the golden sarcophagus, deep within a vast tomb whose doors were topped with massive angel effigies in honor of the fallen Primarch. Of all the Primarchs, Sanguinius is commonly held in the highest honor, because he is generally believed to have sacrificed himself to allow Horus, the great betrayer, to be defeated. The Primarch's name is cherished by the common citizens of the Imperium. Temples devoted to Sanguinius rise aside those of the Emperor. Sanguinius is commemorated on a sacred day of celebration called the San Julianala, when adepts across the galaxy wear on their breasts the red badge of Sanguinius. An apparent avatar, Sanguinius appeared before Mephiston in the warp, revealing the truth of the Gold Angel and Black Angel, this being cryptically stated that he is not Sanguinius, as Sanguinius is dead, yet Mephiston and Dante both suspect a psychic echo of the Primarch may still endure within the Immaterium. <laughs>